Hello and welcome to the Car Carnot channel and welcome to an engine that is an absolute legend. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the 2JZ engine. Not the turbocharged one, this is just a GE with a VVTi. This engine is one of the most talked about engines and one that is heavily modified usually and it's super, super reliable. And this particular one is in a 2002 GS300. Now this GS300 is owned by an absolute car care nut as we're gonna look at a few things in a little bit. But one thing I wanna show you here, this car has right around 133,000 miles. It's a 2002 pretty old car. Doesn't have super high miles, but it does have some miles. Would you look at the inside of this engine? We're doing valve covers here, valve cover gaskets, super common on these. And when you look at the inside of this engine, now most people will see this and they'll be like, huh, well, looks okay. But I, I want you to see one thing about it. When you take a, t a rag and wipe something down, I mean, I have aluminum color. Folks, all this yellowness you see, this is actually oil just sitting there. So if I just give it a quick wipe, it's back to original. This is as clean as you're gonna get an engine ever. I was shocked. Usually you take these, they're like varnished, heavy varnish all over the place. And the one place that always varnishes up on these where it gets really bad is the inside of the valve cover. But look at this one. There's hardly any. And when I say varnish, I mean this. You see this, these stains? And this is actually not heavy. I can just, again, wipe it off and it's gone. It's not caked on, it's not super heavy. I mean, if your engine in your 2002 car turns out like this when you take the valve covers off, you do whatever you're doing, you keep doing that because this is impressive. I mean, we've talked about the 10,000 mile oil changes and we're not gonna get into that too much, but this is one of the things. You open a four or five year old Toyota with 10,000 mile oil changes, they're not gonna be this clean, flat out. They're just gonna be varnished all over the place. Will they run? Sure, and they're gonna start burning oil at some point, possibly, but they're not gonna look this clean. This is incredible. This is always a shocker when I take an engine valve cover and it looks like this, it is beautiful. Now this car is in the shop here because we have a leaking valve cover gasket two of them. So the 2JZ had a interesting designs. One of them is the external water pump. The water pump is right here. And this is a time and belt engine. Water pump is right here. And uh, it is external. It is driven by the drive belt. One thing though that is uh, interesting about this, you do want or it's recommended that you do remove the alternator. I've seen this a few times where people take the water pump, dribbles coolant all over the alternator. Don't do that. If you own one of these, or you're working on one of these, pull the alternator because it's right underneath it. Perhaps that was not the best idea in the world. And uh, usually cars that have alternators that are low in the engine bay are not the greatest idea because they catch all the debris, all the stuff. Usually you want them up top, but hey, you can have everything, I suppose. But equally of a common problem is the valve cover is leaking. Now, oh, valve cover gaskets leak all the time, you know, old rubber. And Eros was actually asking me right before we started this video, how do you know where the valve cover gasket started leaking? Actually, you don't, because usually valve cover gaskets, they just leak all over, not one spot. Just one spot starts because this gasket is original and it is basically a rock. I mean, you can barely move it, and if you keep maneuvering on it, it's just gonna break in half. But the problem with this 2JZ is, when the valve covers leak, because of the way that there's two valve covers, there's a valley in the middle. The valley in the middle houses the spark plugs and the spark plug wires and coils. It loads up with so much oil that 
the car starts misfiring, you have all kinds of issues because the inside is loaded with oil. Kind of tricky to clean because you got to spray the inside, but make sure you don't have a lot of oil sitting on top of the spark plugs. Try to get it out as much as possible. Some oil will still make its way down to the cylinder. When you start it, it's going to be smoking all over the place. And that's just the way it is with these. But you got to be patient with these. And I see a lot of shops just for like a better word, booger it up and ship it. You got to spend time with this. But where I have a concern with this car, and this is something we're going to address with the owner here pretty soon, are the coils. So if you look at these spark plugs, this is a waste spark system, folks. So you see each, there's three coils and three spark plug wires, and these are where the other three spark plugs go. This is a waste spark system. So every coil is going to actually fire two cylinders at the same time. They're always firing at the same time. Kind of like that 5S we talked about, the engine and the Camry. This is the same thing. But my concern is we're replacing the spark plug wires. I have new wires for it. It's really not very difficult. But the coils. I see oil all over the coil tube, like this little tube here. I don't see a lot of oil here, but I see some. I'm concerned about these, these coils, and I'm thinking we're going to talk to this customer. What's the long-term plan? We're keeping this car long. If we're not, then perhaps we're not going to worry about them. But if we are keeping this car long, which, judging by the condition of the whole car and the condition of this engine, possibly that is a plan, I would replace them. Replace the whole coil, not just the, the little boot and be done with it. These are original coils. They're loaded with oil. Might as well replace them. One th other thing that is notorious if you're doing one of these is all these three connectors just break. Now these made a funny noise, but they're still holding. Now this engine has kind of a weird setup because this was the transition between cable driven throttle bodies to electronic. So if you look at the throttle body, which we just laid to the side here, it actually has a cable, a throttle cable. And this throttle cable is connected to an electric motor and a throttle position sensor. And the throttle position sensor gives the motor a signal to open the throttle body. Very overcomplicated design. These throttle bodies on the older line cruisers, they also came out like 98, 100 series. They were notorious to go out and they were super expensive because they are way over engineered for what they are. So that's the, and this one is good, but that's something that's common on these. But from that, you have this Y pipe and that connects to the intake manifold and there's just too much stuff, a million vacuum hoses and all kinds of goodies. That is just the, I suppose, the price of old cars. They have a lot. This engine is super easy to work on. They are somewhat common with, with oil leaks. I mean, they get older, things start leaking, cam seals, crank seals. But otherwise, you will not really have to do much else to it. It's just the stuff attached to it. Of course, it's a time and belt engine. Another cool thing. You can easily pull this front cover that just sits here and you can see the condition of the timing belt. Usually, in most engines you can remove some type of cover, but some of them are more complicated than others. This one is super easy, four bolts, comes right out and you can see the condition of the timing belt. Now, this timing belt looks decent. The owner is planning to replace it in the near future, but this is, a nice thing that you can actually see these. They're very simple. Something else that is notorious for this engine is it likes to chew up O2 sensors. It's just how it is. And if you look here on this side where the exhaust manifold is, you can actually see the two banks. Bank one, bank two. Folks, bank one always have cylinder number one, which is cylinder number one is right here. So you have actually two banks with four sensors. So one before the catalytic converter, which is right here, one in the back, and the same thing on the other side. Now let's talk about the owner of this car because you can truly tell when someone cares about their car. First of all, the engine bay was clean. Usually that's not the case. The second thing is, would we, Take a little short walk here and look 
at the engine covers. You notice the stickers and the writing. Now this is an old school way of remembering when were things done and kind of tell the mechanic that opens the hood, hey, this was replaced on this date, this was replaced on this date, so I have here installed new Prestone 10 year 300,000 mile antifreeze. Yeah, that's not a good idea. New upper lower radiator hoses, miles with them, date, and then this is an absolute relic. Installed new PVC, it's actually PCV valve, 2009, 26,000 miles. And then you flip this big cover, we have all kinds of other goodies. New AC evaporator core, expansion valve, heater hoses at 131. This is very, very recent here. In cabin, done by Cool Right. I don't know who that is. And then another PCV valve. This time it is PCV, not PVC. Again, very recent and 130,000 miles. When you see stuff like this, some mechanics will laugh. Oh, look, here we have another owner that loves to write everything. I actually respect that because this is someone that cares. I see the same thing on the brake fluid when last time it was done. It takes it five seconds. Some people like to keep a journal. That also works, but some people just like to put it on the car. I mean, after all, if I open the hood, I'm working on this car. Before I even test that fluid, I'm gonna look at it. It's been replaced recently, so I'm expecting things to be well. Same thing with the hoses, same thing with everything else. Now the hoses, I will say one thing. It, uh, it is a continental hose, there's nothing wrong with the hose, but uh, it's aftermarket. Unfortunately, I would have kept them original. But what I do like about it is they retained the clamps. Folks, the clamp conversation is rampant. These are the correct clamps for your car. Y you can use warm clamps. They will always leak eventually or actually destroy your radio or where you're clamping it on because this puts even pressure on your hose regardless of how expanded or contracted it is. But the warm clamp is only as good as tight as it is. You tighten it when it's cold, it's gonna be over tight when it's warm. You put it on when the car is hot, it cools down, it's gonna be loose. See what I'm saying with that? Except these clamps, they expand and contract with heat. Always use these clamps. I know they can be annoying. I know some people really dislike them but they're there for a reason. Because guess what? Warm clamps are a lot cheaper than these and the manufacturer would have loved nothing more than put something cheaper and save themselves pennies over the hundreds of thousands of cars they make, but they didn't and it is for a good reason. Something else that is here, new radiator cap, new radiator. Again, new that Prestone coolant, which I really, not friendly with aftermarket coolants, but that's just my opinion. It's up to you. So folks, this is the 2JZ engine. And more importantly, this is a very clean 2JZ engine. This problem with the valley leaking oil, you gotta take your time with it. You don't wanna just not clean the middle and just ship it. It's, it's gonna still smell like oil burning. You wanna spend time. This is a patient job. It makes a huge mess. And you're basically gonna spray down with, with degreaser or brake cleaner, air hose, put the thing, it's gonna splash everywhere and you gotta keep cleaning, cleaning. It takes time, it takes patience. And uh, we actually use a, like a fluid extractor, you just go in there and pull the puddles out. It's a time consuming thing, but you gotta do it right because this engine really deserves things to be right because it is in beautiful shape. And this owner is the next level. He gave me a paper requesting, he wants to replace the timing belt again. He feels like it's been a while. He wants to replace it again in the near future. And he gave me a whole list of things that he wants done to this car in the near future. This is someone that is in the know. The car is here. He's not exactly a DIY mechanic, but he knows. And we go back to the same thing. You don't have to fix your own car. Although I, I encourage you to do basic maintenance, be involved, but you don't have to fix your own car to be involved and understand what's going on. Well, what is a PCV valve? Why does my mechanic want me to replace it? 
Why are we replacing the valve cover gaskets? Or oh, they're leaking. Why are we replacing a timing belt? Because if it breaks, we're going to have big problems. And then you get to understand. And then you replace this timing belt 60,000 miles. Ask for the old one back. Wait, was it too bad or was it not? Maybe next time I can go a little longer. If it was too bad, I can go shorter. That's how you get involved in your car's maintenance and you understand what's going on with it. Doesn't matter if you're not doing the work. Ask your mechanic, show me the new parts, show me the old parts, show me everything. And for this owner, in case he is watching this video, let's go take a walk to the parts. I actually got to grab them while we are doing this. We're going to get going on this job. There's six spark plugs, three ignition wires, two valve cover gaskets, and the Y pipe gasket. Folks, these are all original parts. When it comes to older cars, and this is something I've, I get asked a lot, are you able to get parts for these? Yes, I can. 2JZ has been discontinued for a very long time, and parts are still being made for it. I'm holding them. They were not special order. They were not something super difficult to get. No, they were actually some of these parts, the dealership had them in stock. So use original parts. In the case of the coils, now these coils, they don't actually say Denso on them, but they are made by Denso because this is old times before Toyota owned Denso. So they just say Toyota on them. But if you find Denso coils, they're good. They're okay. Just make sure you watch for counterfeits, folks. And if you're in doubt, just buy originals and you won't have to deal with it. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.